Russian military propagandists have begun openly reporting on the colossal losses among Russian troops in Ukraine, emphasizing the horrific scale of casualties among assault infantry. Reports shared by Russian journalists indicate that commanders are throwing unprepared soldiers to the front lines, where their lives, according to Russian Z-War correspondent Kashevarova, are measured in days. According to Kashevarova, Russian soldiers are becoming expendable and the losses among stormtroopers have reached alarming proportions. She notes that the average life expectancy at the front is less than a month, and from the moment of signing a contract until death, it often takes only 12 to 17 days. The soldiers sent to the front are those who lack sufficient training and experience, or those who are not fully treated and wounded who return to battle due to a lack of resources or simply because of the ruthless policies of the command. The effectiveness of the Z infantry on the battlefield is close to zero, turning what is happening into a senseless and expensive extermination of human lives. As Kashevarova points out, in no other area of Russian life can one find such an unprofitable attitude to human and financial resources as in the army. The Russian side's reports indicates that the losses among Russian troops, which Moscow continues to carefully conceal, have reached critical levels. Ukraine sees in these admissions confirmation that the human losses suffered by Russia are in the tens of thousands for the sake of a war that has no end in sight and that is destroying the Russian population for unachievable goals. Recall Vladimir Putin's refusal to withdraw troops from Ukraine and his decision to send poorly trained teenage conscripts to defend Kursk Oblast against a Ukrainian incursion reveals a stark shift in Russian military strategy. Conscripts were meant to serve only in non-combat roles in Russia. Military observers didn't notice large-scale redeployments from the occupied parts of Ukraine with only limited transfers noted, primarily from Ukraine south. Meanwhile, the intensity of Russian ground assault in eastern Ukrainian Donetsk Oblast does not decrease. Meanwhile, various sources reported the transfer of conscripts and preparations for such movements from multiple regions across Russia to Kursk Oblast. The Telegraph argues that this decision marks a departure from Putin's previous policy, which stated that conscripts would only serve in support roles within Russia. The decision to deploy conscripts in Kursk has even sparked limited protests, an uncommon event in the authoritarian Russia. Forced to choose between the lives of unprepared young men and its ambitions for further gains in eastern Ukraine, the Kremlin chose those gains, the Telegraph wrote. The Red Eagle Aerobatic Team of the Chinese PLA Aviation University of Air Force completed its first adaptive training in Zhuhai City, South China's Guangdong Province on Friday. It is understood that the Red Eagle Aerobatic Team brought nine JL-8 aircraft to the airshow, including eight performance aircraft and one backup aircraft. According to different weather conditions, the Red Eagle Aerobatic Team has designed three sets of more than 20 aerobatic maneuvers for this year's air show. Indonesia's Mount Liwatobi Laki Laki erupted again for the second time Thursday, 
spewing a column of hot clouds that rose 8,000 meters from its peak, three days after a midnight eruption killed nine people and injured dozens of others. There was no immediate report of casualties from the latest eruption. The 1,584-meter volcano on Indonesia's remote island of Flores unleashed clouds of gray-hot ash Thursday. The mixture of rock, lava and gas was thrown up to one kilometer from its crater, Indonesia's Center for Volcanology and Disaster Mitigation said in a statement. The volcano lulled in activity since Monday's deadly eruption killed nine people and injured 64 others. Monday's eruption affected more than 10,000 people in 10 villages. About 4,400 villagers moved into makeshift emergency shelters after the eruption, which destroyed seven schools, nearly two dozen houses and a convent on the majority Catholic island. The country's volcano monitoring agency increased Liwatobi Laki Laki's alert status to the highest level and more than doubled the exclusion zone to a 7-kilometer radius since then, prohibiting any activity in that area. Authorities warned the thousands of people who fled not to return home, as the government planned to move about 16,000 residents out of the danger zone, said National Disaster Management Agency head Suharyanto, who like many Indonesians uses a single name. Permanent relocation is considered as a long-term mitigation measure to anticipate eruption in the future, Suharyanto told reporters after visiting the devastated areas Thursday. Liwatobi Laki Laki is one of a pair of stratovolcanoes in the East Flores district of East Nusa Tenggara province, known locally as the Husband and Wife Mountains. Laki Laki means man, while its mate is Liwatobi Perempuan, or woman. Siap, siap, siap. Dan bukan lagi sudah turun ke bawah itu. Ya, itu awan panas tadi. Tadi kan dia lari ke sana tadi, dulu pali tadi. Sudah bersih sekarang dia pindah. Pulang, 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 pulang saja, pulang, pulang. Pulang kita siang.